Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Across the Pond podcast number, well, I think we're on five now. I got my uh, co-host, uh, Willem Felderhoff from DutchAnarchy.com, correct? That's correct, yes. And uh, he has a YouTube channel as well, uh, Dutch Anarchy on YouTube. And of course, my name is Wardo Rance, or my outfit's Wardo Rance, and I'm Eddie. Anyway, uh, you know, we had a little uh, short discussion before coming online today, and I think we both concur that the most important thing that we should be talking about and keeping our eyes on is what's jumping off not only in Europe, but also America, and with the Yellow Vest uh, movement. I, um, I'm actually excited to see that personally. Uh, and I think that it should be something that should be uh, watched carefully and especially to ensure that the, their aim uh, stays straight. That means staying at the focus of the uh, cause of uh, the dilemma of why these guys are actually protesting. Now, to me, I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, turn this over to Willem just a second here, but to me, uh, it, it kind of reminds me back to the uh, Revolutionary War where uh, people had to get out and fight to uh, gain their freedom. And I see this same thing happen again right now, and I'm seeing it actually going global. Uh, but at any rate, I want to, Will, Willem's from uh, Holland, and he's had his eyes on it pretty good. So I want to go over and just go, hey, Willem, so tell me, what do you think the overall goal and where you see that the uh, movement direction should be focused on? Well, well, first of all, I, I think a lot of people making these comparisons, which is uh, illogical with the French Revolution, when the, uh, the French citizens were fed up and had a lot of frustration, a lot of problems with French nobility, the, 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 you know, the French royals and, 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 uh, and nobility who were uh, neglecting peasants, they were destroying lands when they were hunting, and there, were, there was a lot of frustration, a lot of poverty, a lot of logistic problems and a lot of, uh, you know, uh, there, there was a sort of uh, preparation for sort of revolting against his nobility, but the French nobility and royals were also very aware of it and they wanted to, uh, to, to do some uh, communication. But of course, the French Revolution back then was, uh, was co-opted and was um, uh, from, from above by secret societies from uh, through the Freemasonry. And uh, this was hijacked. This this uh, this this uh, um, frustration of the people was hijacked by this uh, from abroad, actually by Freemasonry. And uh, since then, France was taken over by this Talmudic Luciferian Jew Jewish uh, cabal, which is still in place in France, which you see, which is the French deep state, which is also worldwide. But the the what's hap what's happening now now in this uh, with the yellow vest action i what as far as you can um, uh, judge it of course if, as, as you can analyze it but i i see this as a genuine movement from the people which is not uh infiltrated to a certain degree of course that's always happening with the cabalistic uh, elements from the top down so um and how they will use this in order to to steer it into the direction they want but as i see it now um, it's still a very genuine movement because a lot of people now, they say the Russians infiltrated it. They say the problem with the Yellow Vest is that there is no leader, there is no spokesman, which I think that's the strength. It's not a weakness, yes, that's yes. exactly the strength. I agree yeah, because with you. It's, yeah, and it's spread through the whole country still. So now, the, uh, and the very crucial point is that the police union, uh, the police union declared an indefinite strike from the 8th of December so that all policemen can strike so that they are able to join the yellow fast. Okay, uh, so I have a question. I have a question. So do you, you, now what are we seeing right now? I see Antifa in there. And is that military that I'm seeing? Uh, I'm talking about within the last day or so that's uh, actually 
uh, somewhat pushing back against the people or is that police? Well, there are a, a lot of, uh, you know, controlled, controlled units and a lot of uh, mercenaries also embedded yeah. in these uh, in, in police forces. Uh, there are a lot of volunteers. Uh, I don't know if they brought for, uh, brought in from abroad as well. That's possible. I, I don't I, I don't have a clear picture from that. But what I do see is that there are uh, big factions, big groups uh, of the police and the army. There are eight generals who uh, uh, made a statement that they're they're op they are opposed to the UN immigration uh, plan. This uh, this whole. Uh, um, Treaty of Marrakesh, and they also oppose uh, the, the French deep state, if you, if you want to call it like that. So they're joining the people. That's that's a good thing. But it's very fragile, of course, and I don't see where uh, next Saturday new actions are planned. Of course, this terrorist attack in Strasbourg was part of this. Yeah. This, uh, this doesn't happen. I'm seeing that's a false flag, huh? Yeah, there's a false flag with the same uh, dynamic, same mechanisms. First, uh, the, all the information came from Israeli outlets, Israeli, uh, uh, from uh, Israeli-linked accounts, which, which uh, had uh, knowledge, inside knowledge about the, uh, the so-called terrorists. Like 9-11. Uh, yeah. Like 9-11. So, uh, yeah, like 9-11 and like Nice and like uh, yeah. same, same people, same, uh, you know, it's the same and exactly at this time. So... It's it's interesting to see what they how they will use this to uh, to uh, impose more strict regulations on actions and what more and see where it goes. But for now, it's still I think it's very genuine uh, still because I've seen the past years the problems in France firsthand here. The poverty is enormous. A lot of people are struggling on all kinds of levels. Insane regulation, insane taxation. Uh, when I drove down here two days, in two days, all the uh, speeding cameras were out of service, uh, set on fire or, uh, you know, or, or just taken down. It's like amazing. I saw like something like 50 speeding cameras out of service uh, next to the auto route and you could just pass for free the auto route. So uh, it's, it's, it's the whole country uh, is uh, still, um, yeah. Uh, active in this sense. You have roundabouts still where they, the yellow vests are still located uh, here and everywhere in France. So it's still very, uh, still on. And it's going to continue for okay. sure. Okay, let me interject for just a second, brother. Um, so um, do you see that these guys are understanding that, that this power structure, the Rothschild element and the Jewish uh, connection with this, do you think that the people there are actually waking up to that or uh, are some of them still pretty naive? Uh, do they have a focus? Uh, my last, my, I did a yellow vest uh, uh, a video that I said, aim straight and keep your eye, basically keep your eye on the, uh, on the head of the beast, basically. Uh, and that would be the, the real power elite uh, Jewish power structure. Do you, how much do you think that the people involved in this actually understand that part? Well, I think that's a very small part. Um, maybe in the uh, in the military, or uh, you know, these higher ranks of the military, because they're very aware of the, what's happening in the world and uh, these wars in the Middle East. So they are aware that their country is uh, controlled by some external um, alien uh, entity, which uh, is very clear. Because in France here, you have the CR, the CRIF, the C R I F which is uh, a sister organization uh, of APAC, uh, ADL, in the U.S. And they decide who's going to be president, and that's a uh, Jew or crypto-Jew, of course. Uh, and now it's more blatant because he's Rothschild-linked, even. So, uh, But I don't think that many people are very really aware of the uh, dynamics uh, in the non-visible realm, deep state, and these, uh, these aspects, but more focusing on the symptoms, which is that they live in poverty, they have difficulties to keep alive, stay alive, and they see the, the invasion of France and the, the, the destruction of France. Yeah. That's uh, very visible. I mean, the, there are certain cities which are already completely uh, transformed in alien 
uh, foreign cities like Marseille, where you have like 700,000 militant Muslims living, it's like, uh, I was there six months ago, and it's like, if you're in Lagos, literally, if you walk there in the evening, it's unsafe, fires on the streets, it's like Lagos, the third world uh, city. Oh. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. And actually, one of the things in that video that I mentioned, uh, one of the things that I said in that is to aim straight and stay, keep your eye on the, 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 the solutions. And that is to go after the banking uh, industry and their cohorts. That means all of the politicians that sign on to this shit, the same fuckers that were involved with uh, 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 fomenting the invasion itself and then get rid of the fucking invaders directly. You can't leave those guys there to keep sucking you guys dry. And I look at it's getting ready to happen here, bro. And I'm not liking what I'm seeing one bit. And so I'm glad we're doing this, uh, this show today. So, uh, okay, here, here's one that I, I find quite interesting. So, uh, and there's been quite a toss up uh, that I've been involved with on some of the groups on uh, social media about uh, these guys had uh, snagged a, 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 a tank. Now, if I look at the American, American uh, Constitution, Bill of Rights, the Second Amendment, one of the guys that was behind that was named Tench Cox, or Cox. And uh, he said that every, imp every terrible implementation of the military is the birthright of every American did you get that? Everything they, oh. everything that the military has is the birthright. This okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Everything that the military has is the birthright of every American. That means if they have That's a tank, great. we need to have two tanks, basically, because it's not to yeah. go. It, it, it's to go after the fucking government. Now these guys got themselves their hands on a tank. I'm saying they should be going after every fucking uh, implementation of war. If they're going to do this thing, people are going to die. I'm, I'm, I mean, in big numbers, uh, in France and everywhere. But this is a global push for fucking freedom. Yes. So, 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 you know, I had this heated debate about how, oh, we need to continue to try to find other ways to deal with this. I'm like, no. I've been saying for years, it's, we're past time for talking. Now, go ahead and expound from your idea from that, brother. Well, I, yeah, that, I, I think we're way too far down the, down the drain, if you want to call it like that, to, uh, you know, to stop it, for instance. If we stop it by, for instance, doing healthy, uh, healthy things like closing the borders, which is completely a healthy, normal, common sense uh, things you should do if you operate operate from a sovereign mindset instead of this codependent libtard mindset of uh, more immigrants which doesn't make any sense so and that's not going to happen so even on the contrary we're going to give uh, this diaspora diaspora what is it uh, legal rights to do to continue so the immigrants getting now legal rights to come here it must become more easy to to, uh, to, to enter Europe. So the opposite is actually happening. Instead of closing the borders, some countries are doing it in the, in the East, of course, like uh, Hungary, Czechoslovakia is now, uh, they, they are busy. Uh, Italy, uh, they, they, they have this nationalist kind of uh, movements and they are closing the borders. So they are doing healthy uh, things. Uh, and then the EU is calling for sanctions, of course. But I think we're way far down the, the drain uh, on this path, if you, especially in France, if you see the cities in France, this is uh, not easy to, to, turn, to turn it back. If you stop it now, then you have to relocate all these people. So I don't see this happening without a conflict, without, a, without big conflicts, uh, like yeah. you say. Yeah. It is gonna, it's, it's gonna turn over time into chaos chaotic uh, settings and, and uh, with, uh, with, with very grim, uh, grim uh, prospects. But at the same time, this is the, this, this is the solution as well. But of course, a lot of people, especially in Holland, here in France, they're more proactive because they are so fed up, they live in so, so much poverty, 
uh, so they see what's happening more, they more proactive. If you see in Holland, that's completely, they are so lazy, like in the most big cities, eh? that's uh, the big cities, but if you yeah. in rural areas, people are more willing to fight, literally. Well, when you have nothing to lose, you know, uh, yeah. you know what I mean? But uh, so, yeah. so, uh, so in other words, we concur that there, there's no more time for talk and it's time for getting into action. Uh, and, and, and that's really the way I've been seeing it, the way I've been calling it. And I'll tell you right now, I am having such a struggle to get people to even look at the fact that, that what ha what's happening there is coming here in a big way uh, with the fact that they, what they're doing right now, and I'm the only one that I know of so far that's been reporting on this from day one, giving you the full scoop as, as to how this uh, what movement here in the United States with this open borders policy, which is a Jewish thing. It's, they admit it. I have them on film admitting it. That I, I got the Jewish groups uh, I, I, it, that tie into, oh, the ADL, B'nai B'rith, they're down there. The uh, SBLC, the Southern Poverty Law Center, they're involved with, we're talking about the U.S. border invasion. And what they're yeah. doing is there's, they're, they're, oh, they say, oh, well, you know, we, we got uh, this uh, handled, right? But all eyes are on what I call the um, human shields, which are the women with babies. They kind of did the same thing in, uh, throughout. You remember when Ezra Aid was on the shores of Greece? And yes. they, had, they had the human shields getting off the boats. But what they didn't show you was the boats behind them that was all men fighting age. And it's the exact same shit here. And it's the exact same players that set up all these refugee camps and the rat lines. That's an important scene, the rat lines. This was ISIS recruiting. Uh, they were recruiting out of these UNHRC and UNICEF uh, refugee camps throughout Africa, the Middle East, all the way over to uh, Pakistan and uh, what's the other one over? Afghanistan. And they all had these rat lines that uh, ISIS members were also using. So that tells me that ISIS was recruiting right out of these fucking refugee camps. They didn't need to, all they need to do is get, hey, you know what? You're going to feed you, you know, and give you a couple of shekels. You know, you come and fight and do whatever the hell we tell you. And so now we have the military for, uh, that, that's been invading Syria, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I agree with you. Well, this, this, this point, what you just mentioned, or what you mentioned before, is that Turkey comes into place, like Mexico, it's the same role, uh, because they, they, they brought in via Turkey as well, massively. Turkey is a big player in this. Erdogan even has his own agenda of uh, the Islamization of Europe, where he calls, openly he calls for the Turkish uh, uh, Erdogan supporters to have more than five babies because Europe belongs to, uh, to you. That's what he said. That's what he openly uh, called for. And there are 2,000 uh, agencies, Erdogan-related agencies, so-called for Turkey's uh, uh, interest in, in countries, in Germany and uh, in all these European countries. And they, they, so they are part of this plan of Islamization. That's a plan for Islam. But then you have, of course, the causal factors, which is Jewish. Uh, which is the, the, the Talmudic uh, Jewish agenda. And they use the, the Islam and the Muslims as their cannon folder uh, in order to achieve their plan for this uh, Jewish uh, utopia where they can uh, provide uh, the, 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 the coming of this Antichrist. But you have to destroy all the nations, all the countries. And then, right, right. Then so you see this is literally happening, it's very blatant, but most people are in this stimulus response mode, uh, so they only focus on the symptoms, and that's Islam. So they see Islam as the problem, which it is, it is a very big problem, especially well, the Salafist. Not only that, but that's a tool being used by the Jews, because the fact of the matter is, is that they're using Islam and Christianity to fight each other in order to achieve their goal. Most people, even in our movement, uh, they want to go on, well, it's against whites. Well, it is, but, but at the same time, their main enemies stated, they stated, not me saying it, I just expose it, uh, is that their main enemies is Christianity and Islam. And what I see is they're using one people to destroy another people to have their utopia. 
Yes. And of course, this is all, they, have the, they don't have the, the manpower for it, but also it's what, how, what the, they are being ordered in their ma manuscript of Satan, which is the Babylonian Talmud, which yep. clearly says that they should do the Goyim, should do that. Uh, they should set up the Goyim to fight each other, kill each other, and uh, they do, shouldn't get their hands dirty. And that's all, uh, of course, approved. It's, uh, it's even commanded almost in the, in, the, in the Talmud. If you read the Talmud, I have. Uh, then they, they have used Muslim <coughs> Islam uh, in, in history over and over again. In the Moors, you know, the Moor, when the Moors came into Spain, they were embedded in there with false uh, converters and uh, the Moranos and everything. So they using Islam and promoting Islam uh, as a peaceful uh, religion, and if you say anything about it, it's hate speech or anti-Semite or Islamophobic. That also come, comes from Jewish media, controlled media, uh, which makes it easy. now with the, the, this Treaty of Marrakesh, uh, the, the media is uh, obligated to speak more positively about uh, uh, immigration. So you have to speak very positively, positively about these mass uh, rapes. Uh, and all this stuff, you have to talk positive about that. Yeah. All these yeah. symptoms. It's sad. So, sad. Yeah, but so, I, but the most people, they, uh, they, what I said, they, they, they focus on symptoms. So they focus on Islam, on immigration, which is a problem. But that's, for instance, where a guy like Gerd Wilders in the Netherlands, uh, he is um, uh, controlled opposition in sense. He's an openly Zionist, so he calls only out Islam. Uh, same as Nigel Farage from uh, from the UK, who, did, who was in Brexit, he's also controlled opposition. And he made a deal. He can say whatever he wants about Islam. He gets all the uh, media attention, BBC and everything, but he doesn't speak about Zionist, Jewish, Talmudic uh, control of this whole thing, actually. <laughs> so, I, and I don't think that many people are aware of this because most people are in survival mode here. So they, they, that's also causing the fact that they don't have the time or the energy to really d look into these things. They watch television, so they uh, they see what's presented to them as the reality, and they and they look around, and then they see the problems, which is immigration, of course, and not they don't see. Well, maybe with the yellow vest, uh, uh, you know, demonstrations that people are more focusing on the causes, which is of course the deep state and this uh, nobility and the royals. And uh, the, the Jewish aspect, people, for instance, Nicolas Sarkozy, the people see Nicolas Sarkozy as a Frenchman, but he wasn't, he isn't a Frenchman, he's a Sephardic, Sabbatian Jew even, who uh, destroyed Libya and he made uh, the whole immigration, mass immigration, uh, he facilitated it by, by taking out uh, Gaddafi in, in Libya, that was a, was a yeah. personal thing of Nicolas Sarkozy. And he, he, he even openly, I have it on my YouTube channel where he says, we should have more uh, race mixing and you're obligated. And if you don't uh, uh, take much effort in it, then the state will uh, implement more strict rules that you have to do that. I mean, it's so open. But people still see him as a, as a, as a Frenchman. And it's just, for instance, the same with um, uh, Dominique La, uh, uh, Dominique uh, Strauss-Kahn, he was, yeah. Uh, yeah, so he was about to become the prime minister of France and everybody sees this guy as a Frenchman, but he, he isn't, he's a Jew, he's a uh, Talmudic Jew who openly says that every day he wakes up, he, the first 30 minutes he thinks his first thoughts are, what can I do today, uh, what's, what um, serves the interest of Israel? And he was become he was about to become prime minister of France, so you can see the mindset. But people don't see that because they 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 uh, they don't see the Jewish aspect. They see these people as French people, or uh, you know Joe Biden as an American guy, or you have all these Jews in, in position, or uh, and they 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 uh, disguise as uh, Dutch or French or British or American, wherever they are, they change their name. They, uh, they pretend to be French, but if you see it, their politics, it's clearly uh, devastating for a friend, true, true French in interest. He even called that French doesn't have a, there is a French culture doesn't exist, really. That's what he says. Same as yeah. Macron. And you know what? That brings me up to this gal, uh, Barbara Spector. 
And, you know, she uttered her infamous words about how Europe needed to learn to be multicultural. And then we, right after that, uh, we seen the invasion begin. Guess what? We got a, another new, she was a New York Jew. And now we got another New York Jew, uh, Paul uh, Krugman. I think that's, how, yeah, that, Paul Krugman. He's a, 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 a Wall Street uh, Jew. And he basically uttered the same bullshit. And just shortly after that, the Guatemala, that's uh, Central America, south of me, uh, just below uh, Mexico, uh, just after he uttered his bullshit, um, the, uh, the Central Americans busted through the Guatemala border into Mexico. And guess what? Mexico didn't do shit. Matter of fact, the Mexican governs it, government's in on it. Uh, they're, they're at LinkedIn. They signed on to this whole NAFTA thing. So that supersedes everything. What that does, this NAFTA, it hands over all sovereignty to the United Nations, basically, to their treaties and whatnot. It's going to get bad over here. And what I see here in the United States is we'll have a, not only do we have a, a invasion force of fighting age men that uh, actually are coming here to take jobs, which they, what they need to do here is kill us. Uh, when I say that, I mean, uh, kill our uh, economy worse. So we're doing like the French are doing right now. They're paying for their own demise with the heavy taxation. What do you think that fucking taxation is really going for? It's going to fucking support all these goddamn Muslim invaders. So they need to go out of France and all of Europe. And the same thing is going to happen here. They're already flooding in. Nobody's reporting on it. And, and then uh, uh, they, 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 they uh, uh, have signed these, uh, the USMCA during G20, which means that they're, uh, they're uh, basically signed over Congress. None of it works anymore. None of it. It's part of UN Agenda 21. Uh, and it's actually all the all the shit in the uh, this uh, global uh, migration pact that uh, or the new NAFTA, the, what they call here in the United States, North America Free Trade Agreement, that signs over all sovereignty uh, to the international body of uh, these. I, I guess we can call them shot callers. And so uh, <laughs> when Trump. <clears throat> or even the new Mexican president, which just came into office here a week or so ago. He claims, he claims he's going to join Trump in fighting against the new world order. Really? Huh? But you signed this idiot. No, oh, no, no. You're already signed on to this. So it's all fucking charade, you know, and Trudeau, uh, Justin Trudeau out of Canada, he's one of them that helped draft this bullshit. And, you know, he's saying, oh, he's going to uh, he's going to fight it. But yet they're for open borders. Uh, well, actually, uh, Tr Trudeau is definitely out for open borders. The other two, that's uh, Mexicans, president and uh, Trump, that they, they claim, oh, we're not gonna, we're not for that. You know, blah, 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 blah. It's all smoke and mirrors and a fucking charade. And these guys are laughing at you. Anyway, yes. I, I see the same shit happening over there where, okay, we here are paying for our own demise. And the way I see it is uh, people of Europe that have been invaded, all these taxes and the constant decline on your economy and your way of life and your uh, social systems and all that are, are uh, they're being uh, destroyed and the invasion paid for by them stripping, stripping your assets. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> yes, it's very, uh, I mean, it's, it's a sort of mockery aspect indeed. I agree with you. Uh, uh, it's, it's exactly in line with the protocols of the elders of Zion, when, yeah. they, uh, when they try to, to, we are completely dumbed down uh, and apath apathic, totally apathic to, uh, to, towards this invasion and to this war on all levels. So much. We're killing our own children. We are and paying for it at the same time. In Sweden now, Sweden is, I mean, Sweden is so this liberal, I mean, this mental illness of liberal. I was going to ask you about this, bro. Check this out. 
how many people are still clamoring? Let them in, let them in, let them in. Yeah. Well, this is, I mean, this, uh, this, it is an expression of a codependent mindset, which is uh, a mental disorder. One of the symptoms of codependency is uh, unhealthy or no boundary uh, uh, boundaries. So uh, distortion yeah. of boundaries or no boundaries at all. And at the same time, enmeshment with uh, unhealthy people. So if, uh, for instance, if, if there's an immigrant raping somebody, then uh, he gets sentenced uh, free set free because he couldn't know that this was illegal in this country because he was conditioned with the Quran or whatever. In Isn't his that country. something? I know, I know. I, I've read that stuff. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. So, and then Sweden is now, uh, they have to pay now for, they get an extra tax for their television, uh, state television. They have to pay a tax for it, to pay for it. Uh, so they're paying for the invasion of their country, and at the same time they have to pay for the propaganda, which is uh, feeding this uh, whole thing. And, and it's, I mean, it's Sweden is very sad, of course. It's, it was a beautiful country, very safe, no crimes, and now it's rapes, Malmo's rape city number two in the world now. What's it's the name no of the area. What, Malmo is Malmo is uh, is the rape city number two in the world now. Wow! In, in uh, figures. So it's a no-go area, one of the 60, 65 no-go areas in Sweden. 65? Yeah. Wow. So well, in France, you have, uh, France, you have also uh, a huge number of no-go areas and, uh, and, and big areas where Sharia law is uh, in, 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 in place in France, where no women on the streets, uh, huge areas. Same in the uh, in UK, I read you have about 80 uh, 80 operational Sharia courts in the UK. Wow. You have more than 20, 20 big cities in the UK have a, a Muslim major mayor. Hey, so, let me ask you something. You ever thought about what Sharia law really is? Well, I think it's, uh, I think it's Talmudic law. It's the same. It's a uh, bingo. Good man. Yeah. 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 It is. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if you so, see, in the so really, it's 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 the Noahide law uh, for uh, Saudi Arabia. It's the same thing, it, or Talmudic. Yeah. And you're right to mention Talmudic because what is that? That's uh, what would they call that? That's uh, where they uh, uh, the uh, fuck. they they uh, share it. Uh, there, it's not written or wasn't written until I don't know how long ago, but. It was passed down as a, uh, help me out with this. Uh, uh, Mishnah. Uh, no, uh, uh, tradition kind of thing. Uh, there was another word, but I can't think of it. Anyway, uh, the same thing with the Sharia law. I actually looked into it in a little bit. It's in one of my later videos where I say, no, you guys are worried about Sharia law. What about the Noahide and uh, um, uh, the Talmudic law? That's what you're really under. And they're worried about Sharia law. It's the same fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's the same. It is. And it's, it's the same people. Yeah. Jews. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. I agree with you. And uh, for instance, Germany is completely firmly on the Talmudic law, ruled by Talmudic law. Actually, in, other, in every country, we are embracing Talmudic law principles. I mean, the, the, the really test for any uh, code of law is its university, universally, that is universal. The law should be the same for, for persons, but also in regions. So the Talmudic law is based on the idea that we as men can interpret law and then make uh, our own uh, decisions and, uh, and laws. But that's of course based on the idea that we are God, which is the chosen people. They they consider them as being God and the rabbis, it's all interpretations about the law of God, the common law, uh, universal law, that, that they can interpret this, these different and then apply them to the goyim and not to them. Right, so, I, was, I was gonna say, I hope you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, because it's not applicable. It's, it, it's there. Well, well, Go ahead. Yeah, my, my friend Monica, Monica Schaefer, she was in jail for 10 months. She was yeah, just released. Yeah, she's out. She's, uh, she was released last month. What about Alfred? Uh, after ten, 10 months, but her brother, uh, Alfred, he's sentenced for three and a half years. Ah. So he's still, still in Munich. 
But uh, she describes uh, this, uh, this Talmudic law principle in court because uh, it's, it's impossible to defend yourself uh, without committing new crimes. So you're not allowed to bring in evidence the, 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 the judge is God, that's a human being, so the judge decides which evidence is allowed. But if you, under these hate speech laws or Holocaust denial laws or these, these insane laws, uh, it's impossible to, to, for instance, defend your uh, position or to explain how you came to the conclusions without committing new crimes. So they can put her in jail. So they can keep these people like Wolfgang Froelich. He's in jail for 40 years in, in, uh, in Switzerland. He's a chemi chemical a chemist, and he exposed the yeah the, inc the inconsistencies in, uh, in, in the gas chamber. Uh, what about your buddy? Uh, what was his name? Ryson or uh, I can't remember his name. How to say it? Yeah, Erve Ryson. But he's uh, he he's still uh, free, but. Um, they continue with new charges because they can find always new charges and new crimes under this Talmudic law, uh, which they decide. They own the court. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's of course, uh, uh, but in Germany it was very clear. Monica talks about this in her talk. She did, with, uh, she did a few talks with Brian Ruhr where she explains this, uh, that it's actually impossible to defend yourself without committing new crimes in German court which is actually classic Talmudic. And uh, Alfred, he was allowed to uh, show his videos, he did. But he said, I want to show the videos in, in, uh, as a whole, not as a fragment, because you need to, to know the context on uh, what you, just, what you oh, say. Oh, but they uh, can't have that. No, but, but he, they, he made them do it. So they had to do it. Oh, really? That was, yeah, he, they had to show the whole videos of the whole talks he did. Uh, but uh, of course, they dismissed it uh, and what more. So he sent us for three and a half years. But um, I, we have embraced Talmudic law. The, 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 the masses of the people, they are Talmudized, they are Judaized in the sense that they think if you talk with people about the law, then they say, well, we need these laws. Otherwise, it would be chaos. We need. So they, they are embracing Talmudic law principles through mind control, of course and programming, but uh, they don't have a clue. I was on the streets in Holland, and do, uh, you have these, uh, do, sorry? Do they, do they call it Noahide law over there, or, because uh, uh, here under uh, Hubert Walker Bush in 1991, but actually uh, Reagan even embraced it. That was uh, when he was, uh, that was like back in uh, 1980, uh, he became president. He embraced the uh, Noahide law, but uh, Hubert Walker Bush, uh, when he became president, he signed it in, and we're waiting to see when they're going to, and it may possibly happen under Trump, where they start actually um, enforcing uh, Noahide law, which is, the ta it's the same, same like Sharia law. They're the same thing. We got to, people don't get it that the, 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 uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, the, the, the ruling uh, party in Saudi Arabia is Wahhabi, and they want you to be uh, mad and scared about Islam, but these guys are not Islamic. They're, they're, they're uh, Wahhabis, Wahhabists, who came out of Turkey through the Donme, if you recall all that. Some say that it's the Sephardims and whatnot that were run out of of uh, uh, Europe back during that period of time where we, you had mentioned it earlier. But I see it actually that the real controlling faction, even in Turkey, has been for fucking centuries, has really been um, Ashkenazim, which is the big one that uh, people need to understand. Ashkenazims are not of the bloodline of the uh, well, Eve, neither neither uh, the Sephardim, that's where the split happened for uh, the Semitic side of this so-called God's chosen people shit. But Ashkenazim have absolutely nothing to do with the tribes of Israel, the lineage of Christ, any of that stuff. At any rate, um, so uh, I don't know where you want to go from here, bro. 
Well, it's good. I think it's very good that you uh, that you uh, uh, make these differences and be more specific about it because I think one of the 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 big problems is that we generalize. So we talk about the Muslims or we talk about the Jews, but I not all Jews are pro the problem or all the Muslims are the problem. Um, uh, same with with uh, with white Christians uh, or white people. Not all are problems. So, yeah. but as long as they don't speak out about Talmudic. Uh, rabbinic Judaism so if ordinary non-Talmudic Jews uh, if you want to call it like that don't speak out against that faction in their tribe uh, same with Muslims uh, if they don't speak out against these Salafistic Wahhabi uh, fake kind of Muslims or what do you want to call it these militants extremists as long as they don't speak out and and mention that they are really a problem that this is a problem it's just, it's just uh, you know, it's two sides of the same coin. But we have the same problem. We don't call our, uh, the people in our tribe, who are clearly Satanists, Shabbos Goy, or uh, people in power, they are not all Jewish, but most of them are not Jewish, but they are Satanists operating from a Satanic, corrupted mindset as a Shabbos Goy or crypto Jews or whatever, this royalty, we're embracing royalty, we do the same thing. So. I think it's very important to be very specific about you cannot you cannot talk about the Jewish people. What is that actually? It's very it's vague and it's very uh, uh, you get a lot of controversy and what is it exactly? So uh, it's, I think it's very important that we make clear distinctions within uh, the, the different tribes, sort of, if you want to call it, and stay keep communicating. That's an important thing yeah. because in all in all areas are great people, and there's nothing more powerful than a Jew speaking out against his own tribe, or a Muslim speaking out against his own tribe. That's a very powerful thing. We and I'll tell you something. Then we need to be uh, really careful of because I see a lot of this going on where people are speaking out about. Judaism and Israel and stuff, but the fact of the matter is, is that uh, they're being allowed to speak about this. And now we already talked about it, and we don't have to go into that in depth. But I do want to make a, a, a statement that I'm coming more and more in line with, and I'll tell you why. If you claim that you are God's chosen people, I don't care if you're a Zionist, anti-Zionist, anti-BDS Jew. If you're, uh, look, you can be an anti-BDS Jew and against all that Zionist shit, but if you're claiming that you're God's chosen people, you're a problem for me, okay? That's just my stance, and it's been developing, and I'll tell you right now, to be honest with you, I'm coming more in line with it as the days go by, because if you don't deal with the whole issue of uh, this uh, thing that has crept into societies across the world, uh, if you don't deal with it appropriately, then we'll never, ever see a true free people, in my opinion. Now, uh, does that mean that everybody uh, is uh, one of those that claim that they are God's chosen people? If you are, you're, you're, you're my enemy. You're, and, you, and I say that everybody ought to see it as that that's their enemy, too, because these guys are the ones that's pushing it. And it's not me saying it. I got guys that say they're, uh, they're uh, for BDS Jews. But at the same time, they're sitting there calling for open borders here in my country. Is that a forked tongue cocksucker or what? You know what I mean? Uh, and, and, and so, you know, you, could, you can uh, say different things, but your actions are one way. And then what you get from your, your religious leaders, which even in the Torah, you know, tells them they're God's chosen people, when the, I, I just can't follow with that whole thing. They're not God's chosen people. And if they were, uh, well, that, 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 whole, that whole covenant was killed with the death of Christ. Now, if you're a Jew, you're going to argue that one, that, that he was a whore and living in excrement and whatever the fuck else they say. But for you to say, you following me? If, you, yeah. if, you, if, you, if you're going along that mindset, then, uh, then you're, I have an issue with you. That's just my personal take. And that's where uh, daily, daily I'm becoming more and more in tune with that. Okay, so I'll shut up for a second. <laughs>
No, those good, good points. I uh, I hear you. Uh, I think I think the, I mean I don't want to uh, hurt feelings or whatever, but I think the, mo the these three Abrahamic uh, religions enslaved humanity for a big part, also from from this uh, and and created this codependent mindset because they all have a messiah, external messiah, uh, which makes them uh, which makes them themselves sort of a, a sort of codependent uh, victim uh, kind of uh, state which needs to suffer in this whole this whole path and looking for this external savior in the, in the form of a politician or a, a hero or a pop star or all this idealizing of people but I think through social engineering most of the people operating from a satanic mindset without being aware of it because th this ideology of satanism is, is an unknown concept people associate satanism with strange rituals and baphomet which is of course a part of it but the ideologies is mainly the heart of it is based on the idea that you're god that it's about you and if you look around you uh, people are driven by their passions and their feelings so information that makes them feel uh, unpleasant or depressive. They think they have the moral uh, choice to ignore this information and uh, continue with their selfies and the picture of their uh, their holidays, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Stupid thing. So this is uh, an expression of a satanic mindset that do it, uh, do it that well. <laughs> Do what thou, do as thou wilt. Exactly. This yeah. this is what drives us. We are driven by feelings. Do whatever you think is good. What you feel. What feels good uh, for you. I mean, I I, I was in London uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, if you see the the, the insanity, the financial uh, epitome of financial insanity, there it's like truly full blown satanic uh, system. Um, of course, in the city of Paris as well. This, I mean, you see there the cars and people with uh, half million watches and uh, bottles of champagne. One hundred fifty thousand dollars for a bottle of champagne. I mean, it's if, if, when they go out in the, the, the nightclubs. So this whole system needs to go. So we need uh, interference, and we are getting interfered with. Uh, but it's going to be much, much, much worse, of course. If people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear it, but it's very obvious because we're, we're, we have these open borders. And, uh, yeah, well, that will lead to... Uh, to uh, this, this will become a third world, uh, literally. We're not only, uh, you know, we're becoming a third world area. And the U.S. the same. Yeah. California, how is that in California? Because I, I heard that, like... The half of them are Mexicans, or forty percent speaking uh, Spanish. Mexican. You have in LA, you have like fifty blocks with only tents and and uh, poop uh, squats and whatever typhus and things. Yeah, well, I've been doing a lot of work on that whole thing. Everything from the homeless, the fires, the fires, and that agenda. Uh, and now, what's going on in Europe? I hear you guys have got that same kind of uh, uh, shit playing out over there, bro with these de oh, yeah well that's i mean that's a huge topic of course uh, there's another uh, huge topic the whole uh, uh, agenda 21 2030 with climate change and the global warming agenda that's 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 the biggie i think uh, but then people you see it's happening here i have a water crisis here it's uh, i don't have water and the government says you you, tell, you do what you want but uh, we don't help you anymore so uh, it's not raining uh, it's, there's weather war here also going on in different, uh, different areas. And of course, the, the, the mass majority doesn't see uh, the, that this is also manipulated. And the geoengineering is a big, big player in the whole thing. Uh, I mean, this climate agreement excluded aviation, for instance, from, from the whole climate agreement. Why is that? Why are they continuing to fly for 10 euros? You can fly to Amsterdam and 200 euros by train. So uh, why is that? It doesn't make any sense. So, uh, but people, of course, this is way too, same with the fires. This is for people uh, too much to handle. And uh, Well, uh, here, here in, uh, what I've been seeing, and this is part of June Agenda 21, because those are two different uh, agendas, UN Agenda 21 and UN Agenda 2030. Uh, uh, UN Agenda 2030, uh, I'm, I, I may have them backwards, but I'm going to, uh, and I've been fighting both of them for a long time at the local level. 
One of them is directly implementing these agendas at the local level. The other is more the global level. And their time stamp on it uh, is important too. And I think we're in, I think we're further along in actually UN Agenda 2030 than people give credit to because that is the closing date on it. UN Agenda 21, if I might, I, I might be um, a little bit off on this, but I think UN Agenda 21 was scheduled date for completion uh, 2050. But they're moving along faster and faster on it. I've been fighting that shit at the local level a long time. When I'm seeing these fires, now I'm going to apply it to California only because that's the one that's kind of the hot issue. And where you see people incinerated in their cars, their cars melted, just like we've seen on 9-11, blocks and blocks yeah. away from the towers, that we've seen the same destruction of vehicles in uh, New York or uh, Manhattan or whatever. We've seen that same destruction of vehicles happening uh, during 9-11. So uh, uh, here, here uh, what I see, if you look at all the fires, now a lot of guys are, oh, well, that's for Diane Feinstein and her fucking, uh, her railway system. I go, no, that, that's maybe a little bit of it. She's get her husband's getting the contracts, an insane amount of money to build this alleged high-speed rail, but it isn't. Uh, at, at any rate, uh, but if you, uh, you remember the maps, like you could, you probably have them in Europe too for Agenda 21. They'd show you maps where they want to get you off the land. No, uh, well, we call them, we'll call them no-go zones for, for population. And then they have buffer zones, uh, and, and then they have the little smart cities. Do you guys have maps like that over there? Yeah, I, d I didn't see it like you have in the States, that map. Uh, yeah. I don't see that for you, but you have well, in France for you. Yeah. So, so what I was, uh, real, real quick on this, uh, the, the point I was going to get, if you look at the fires and where they've been happening, and these are the homes being just uh, burnt in the forests, the trees right next to the house. Still, we have rose bushes and bloom and cars melted, you know, uh, in the driveway between the house and the, the, the house is completely demolished. All the shrubbery, though, is still uh, green and flowering and all that shit. And meanwhile, you got a car melted in the driveway and the house uh, is completely uh, gone, you know, rubble. Uh, and, and Just, it, yeah. when you when you take those fires and you lay it on top of the map because I, I did a video showing uh, it's in a something that I released here recently about the fires okay people aren't looking at the fact that this is that this is the uh, UN agenda so these places where they're incinerating it these uh, homes and they're pushing the people off the lands meanwhile they're not getting rebuilding permits so they're gone from that land. And then in uh, Paradise, they have full military block that whole fucking area off. Military. So now let's go and tie this back into what I have to say about, about France. I say Fran French people and all of the Europeans that are involved in this yellow vest and Canada, and it will come here eventually. Uh, I say you get every piece of military equipment you can and put up a good fight and keep your aim on the actual assholes that are behind this stuff and don't get distraction, di distracted. And I say the same thing to this paradise, paradise uh, campfire bullshit, which happened in Chico, California. We got videotapes of people that they were incinerated, incinerated like, like Sodom and no, yeah, Sodom and Gomorrah. They were completely incinerated inside of their cars, and not even a chance to get out of them or anything. They weren't in, laying on the ground for the most part. They were fucking fried uh, down to the bone in these cars. I mean, uh, but this is, this is to get you off the land. He, he, Deborah Traveris did good work on this, as a matter of fact. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, this, this, I saw some uh, people who lost their house and, and got red pills uh, by this, actually, they w weren't aware of all these things before, but because of their uh, situation, they got red pills uh, with hearings, and a very brave woman uh, speaking out uh, about directed energy weapons. But of course, this is for most people way out of the box that, uh, 
that you know that factions of control would do attack us. I mean, most people are still operating in the Stockholm uh, syndrome modus, so they don't think that the government. So, Willem, ever Willem, do are those are those same kind of fires happening to your knowledge and throughout Europe? No, but uh, clearly there are droughts, droughts, uh, uh, targeted areas for drought. So uh, the, the, the water is the water. There's a water crisis, severe water crisis, also in Holland, also here in my area. Uh, I live in the red zones in France. Sarkozy in 2010 he uh, divided the whole country in different color codes. And if your uh, if your house is in a, for instance, my house is in a red zone because I live next to a river here, and I, there is this risk of flooding, so-called flooding. So. If, but you have also for fires in the south, you have fires. So probably there are also, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know how, but uh, uh, manipulated fires in the south of France. Well, and in Spain, definitely. There, no, 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 that's for sure. Uh, last summer in Spain, there were very uh, inconsistent fires and uh, weird stuff at the same time with California. So uh, this is happening also in Europe. But th this is a red zone for a reason of fire. So if my house is flooded, uh, or when it's burned down as a fire, you're not allowed to rebuild it. I'm not allowed to rebuild this house. That's what they're doing. I cannot, uh, yeah, 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 bro. That's that's Agenda 21 shit. Yes, Agenda 21. So I cannot insure it uh, properly. My the worth, uh, the value of the house is very low. So I'm in prison because I have a mortgage still. So uh, I don't know how long, but it's from the bank. So I don't really mind actually. So, uh, but still, that's the way they do it here. Um, but it's very important to bring it back to the yellow vest uh, with, uh, with what, what you're calling for a web to get weapons. In France, there's a very uh, long tradition in the military. You have this uh, army of uh, the legion of, uh, how do you call it in English? Uh, the, the étranger, that's the, 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 the foreign, foreign army. It's a sort of mercenary army and it's in stations in France. But there's a long tradition of French uh, uh, military traditions so and a lot of people are joining the people so that's very important this is also one of the reasons why they're pushing now that there, there's a strong push for this European army the EU army they want to they want to accelerate the installment of EU army because when you had when you looked in Paris and you see this this police riot police they operate from fear actually these people uh, are uh, they, they they operate from the from the polarity of fear they with the suits but they actually fearful as well but they could communicate with the people and they have the same problems so they, besides the language problem when you install eu army of uh, oh yeah, you know, yeah. Of people, yeah but even if you so if you have a united united nation army uh, right. or police force, you can forget it it's right. uh, because they, they these people operate from... They yeah. don't give a fuck. They'll shoot your ass in a hot second, bro. And I've been calling that for a long time. Yeah. Our government and they operate, more, because they operate more from fear because they're outside of their own habitat. So yeah. they even more will shoot. They don't care. They don't have any uh, re, uh, connection with the emotions, with the sentiments, of the, with the traditions, with the culture. They don't speak the language. So they feel even more stressed and it's impossible to communicate with these people uh, and to well, try and to not, uh, not only that but bro but it's like uh, in one of in some of my um my border invasion videos i point out how they were setting up these refugee camps throughout the middle east uh as several parts of africa all the way down to sudan and whatnot and uh the rat lines that they used these guys are already on board. To, these are the very guys that invaded you over there. <coughs> and they've already been being radicalized and used as mercenaries in the Middle East. Many of these guys that are coming in are ISIS members. And I figured it out, bro, because they were put up by, they were set up by the UNHRC. The UNHRC is the, the part of the UN that moves people. Okay, them and UNICEF were the ones, the main guys, the main ones that helped set up the, the and congregate the people, and uh, uh, they formed what I call the rat lines, 
these rat lines were which led to, uh, to Turkey for the main flood of Europe. And also these rat lines were used by ISIS as protected areas. NATO and everybody else was told to stay the fuck out of the area. You understand that? And uh, well, so the, the same shit's happening here. And well, our government here, uh, I reported on it back last June where we're facing this uh, gun confiscation. We got the UN and UNHRC and UNICEF embedded with the, uh, the, the uh, border invaders here coming up through Central America, uh, wave after wave, actually the 15th, which is two days away. Uh, I found earlier reports that they're supposed to be sending up a mega caravan from there, and it'll be coming out of South America as well, which means Colombia, Venezuela, and these areas. And... Um, the, the, the uh, reporting that I started on since last June was when I was talking about the gun confiscation, which is a United Nations agenda, uh, came out of UN, UN ODA back in 1952. So basically at the founding of the United Nations was one of their main agendas was to disarm the American people. I don't know, uh, you guys over throughout Europe, how many countries actually the uh, people themselves still carry weapons well I, there I, th I don't know if uh, open carry is, uh, is is not permitted anywhere maybe in switzerland switzerland is uh, approved i think sort of that's kind of hands off it. isn't it isn't switzerland yeah. hands off area no yeah. no military yeah yeah they're, they're never going to be touched but so so this unhr i'm uh, sorry this gun confiscation, uh, I, I was making meetings at the local level where they were saying, we're not going to use any uh, of our uh, funding, meaning from the local level, to implement any of these uh, uh, Second Amendment uh, uh, violations, basically. And I'm like, well, I went down there and I was in their face about it. I go, you know, you fuckers, uh, they don't need your money. The United Nations don't need your money. That is Rothschild, okay? That is their tool. And at any rate, well, after I got done with this shit, I hammered them on two, two different meetings they had at the local level. Then I ran across, they just had finished up what was called a UN, uh, uh, what the fuck was it? Um, shit. RevCon 3, Plan of Action. During this, it concluded uh, June 29, where uh, the um, representatives that attend these UN meetings here from the United States, basically, and it's not the first time either, they gave the United Nations peacekeepers permission to come on to our shores to oversee, remember that, oversee gun confiscation here in the United States. And now, you know, all these gun guys, Oh, I don't know what happened here. I'm like, dude, I'm reading you the fucking documents right off the UN uh, website. Well, they since removed it, but I found there's other copies of it. Uh, but at any rate, so uh, the, getting back to what you're talking about and all these guys that have no fucking qualm about shooting a European man, uh, that's the same story here. And look, at you got to remember who is in the UN uh, peacekeeping forces uh, globally. It's all fuckers that give us not one fucking iota of a shit about a European man or Americans or anything like that. They'll shoot you in a hot second. So my thing is you better get used to the idea of fucking using blue helmets as target practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is, uh, in the UN, is even the, the Human Rights uh, Council of the United Nations run by Saudis. They, 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 uh, I mean, it's insane. It's the Saudis... Yeah are uh, responsible for human rights uh, in the United Nations. Isn't that funny? <coughs> Some of the worst yeah, human but, rights violators outside of Israel that there is, you know? And then yeah. uh, fucking Trump and Kushner's giving them $450 billion in fucking weapons sales. And they're, oh, by the way, the 28 pages indicates that they are behind, they're the ones that were funding 9-11. And you're turning around and giving them fucking... 450 fucking billions in weapons? I'm not, are you fucking kidding me? Uh, people just don't get it. No, no, people don't. Uh, most people don't get it, but most people don't 
uh, they cannot cope with uh, this tsunami of information. The reality, see, reality. They can't yeah. cope with reality. No. It's too much, but uh, I mean, we're, we're getting a reality check, and it's getting yeah, it will get it, it will it will get worse. But it is very crucial what's going to happen here because I still think that this movement was partly genuine. But they will, of course, come with uh, like this terrorist attack. But they will also uh, use other uh, well and, ways. And, and, and another thing there. See, the, the first thing they're going to do, and they did, is blame it on some Islamic dude. When in fact it was probably something like Antifa or whatnot, or the fucking mercenaries, or who knows who the fuck actually did the shit. It's just like when I've been reporting on these goddamn false flag shootings here in uh, hell, hell. Don't forget, I come from the very next false flag shooting here in in America on a, a school grounds happened here in my city where I live in, and I'm the only one that re I actually I exposed the, the Jewish. Uh, fingerprints on it everything from oh uh, Breitbart sent their guys in and a lot of people don't understand Breitbart's uh that's a that's a Israeli Mossad uh, uh propaganda rag uh is there good information in there yeah but you got it's not just what they say but it's what they don't say and where they misdirect you and whatnot at, at any rate um uh you know it, it that's the total I, thing yeah go ahead but well, I put a video on YouTube uh, about Pim Fortuyn. He was killed in 2002. Who was that? Uh, well, he was uh, Pim, Pim Fortuyn. Uh, that's his name. Okay. He was a Dutch patriot. He was, and he was a uh, leader of the Dutch. Uh, he had a party, uh, the political party. And he, he gained a lot of power. And he was about to become prime minister. And he was killed by Patsy. That's Volker van der G. It's a whole story about it. And, uh, but he, if you see his points, uh, I put it in the video. He talks about uh, immigration and what's going to happen. He, he already talked about Marseille in France. And what he wanted to, to do, actually, is on the, uh, his agenda was clearly he was not controlled. and He was uncontrollable. And he, had a lot, and he was about to become prime minister. And he was killed uh, in 2002 openly, like sort of. The Kennedy uh, thing is very openly like it, it demolished the uh, Dutch, uh, yeah, nationalism. But uh, now you got this Geert Wilders figure who's complete Zionist shill. Uh, but uh, that's an interesting guy to speak for time uh, because if you see him speaking, it's like prophetic words actually what's going to happen and where we're we going and where we are now. But uh, most people don't see it, of course, because. Uh, they, 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 they are overloaded with new information. This terrorist attack, the narrative is out next day, continuing, and nobody's asking questions. The narrative yeah, doesn't change. And, and who's the first one that brought out the narrative? It was Israeli sources. It's, you know? it's completely ridiculous. But of course, this is the way information is processed today. People, uh, I saw something. They now are going to train students at school. They get a sort of course how to um, uh, to spot fake news or so how to interpret uh, the news so they say every student every every uh, uh, child at school needs to learn how to to find real information so and then it said first of all you have to start with the source so it needs to be a credible source and then they they come up with the sources they're all mainstream like the dutch telegraph the dutch uh, sure, sure. Uh, Broadcast. Well, if you talk about fake news, it's like these people who are giving these courses. They really think that it's really cool, good what they're doing. It's the world upside down, and this yeah. this completely upside down. Of course, if you look back into the war, I, I want to make a sort of article about it that uh, about fake news. All these wars of the last, well, almost all the wars started with a huge lie, factual Absolutely. lie. Actually. Yeah. So broad. Brought, brought to us by, by, by apparently fake news outlets, and those are all mainstream because well, it wasn't internet. People don't want to go to war. Fuck, who wants to go and fight and die? Yeah. Especially if you understand that you're fighting and dying for fucking corporations and bankers, for Christ's sakes. And that's what yeah. people don't get. That's all you're fighting for, and that's all we have been fighting for. Well, here in America, with the exception of two wars, and, and that was a, a revolutionary war, and then the War of 1812. Everything outside of that was, uh, well, control, well, the War of 1812 was an interesting one. 
it was really a continuation of our, our American Revolutionary War. But uh, that was brought on by Rothschild directly because they didn't get their uh, charter, a reissuing of their charter for their uh, uh, central bank back in 1891, which ended in ele uh, 1811. Uh, sorry. Which, uh, which, which, 1791 to 1811 was the first charter. And then the second charter was 1816 to 1836. And then Andrew Jackson came in and defeated Jackson. that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and but but uh, so so the the uh, plotting for the Civil War started with Andrew Jackson defeating. Listen to this, Andrew De Jackson defeating the bankers, which he promised to do, and he did. And actually, he he uh, brought our uh, uh, books. He he he. he uh, our books were good. Our financial books. Uh, were good uh, under he was the only one that uh, I forget the term I want to use but he uh, it, it was it was a, a, a positive but ever since then it hasn't been and look and and the plotting for the uh, the Civil War American Civil War started the very day they didn't get their uh, third charter and uh, well so uh, I did a lot of work on that one too it's a pr pretty interesting uh, it's actually American Civil War 2.0, and it, it, uh, that video was influenced by what was going on here in the United States with the uh, Charlottesville, Virginia uh, uh, situation where we had alt-right and Antifa, uh, uh, both controlled, both controlled, both had Jewish control, uh, the right and left paradigm, uh, and um, well, and what we had here in the United States was all these guys. I don't remember. I don't know if you uh, paid attention to it or not, but they were destroying all these civil war monuments. And yes. so that, that inspired me. And I did a, a workup on that showed the controlled opposition from both sides. And then I did a big workup for the uh, centerpiece of this film, American civil war 2.0 as a big workup on, what really was going on with our American Civil War. You should check it out. It's pretty interesting. But at any rate, you guys over there, you're facing the same shit. And, my, my, you know, the purpose of this, I, want, I, I got a lot of good information out of you. And I think we concur on just about everything uh, uh, as far as our thought processes. And, and um, my biggest thing that my, and my hope, prayer, whatever you want to call it, is that the people of Europe that are actually doing the doing the the grunt work right now with this movement? I hope that they can keep their aim straight. I actually even laid out what I think would be a good plan. It's in the Yellow Jackets Aim Straight. If you haven't seen that video, that's where I speak about this. Um, that they keep their aim straight. They go after the banking cartel and all their minions and get these fucking invaders out. Now, I don't know how they're gonna deal with this Antifa, it looks like they're rising up and stirring up shit and, who, and whatever mercenaries, but I'm really hoping that they can, that they can um, stay focused on what the real, uh, where, where the real success can be achieved through. And that's uh, laid out in a little short plan that I kind of put together, which, entails getting rid of the invaders that's gonna suck you guys dry over there in every european country uh continue to uh to to uh uh promote and support these guys you know uh, that's where my mind is okay so enough out of me first yes. no uh, me too and it's crucial what uh, the military stands will be uh, if that's growing, if more people from the military and the police uh, join, that's, that's of course very important. Big uh, benefit. Yeah, big benefit. I mean, but this Treaty of Mar Marrakesh, I mean, it was signed even in an immigrant country, in one of the most important uh, uh, transit countries for immigrants. They don't sign a contract which is destroying Europe in a European country, but in, a, in Morocco, of all countries. I, I've read but some stuff on that. Huh? I've read some stuff on that. Yeah, I mean, nobody's yeah. going to the street uh, to, to stop this treaty. In, in right, Africa, right, right. Especially in these third world countries. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. 
but but I, I'm I'm still I mean these Kabbalistic sorcerers, if you want to call it like that, they will uh, do something and, and use this whole movement to steer it in the direction they want. So yeah, but, that's why that's why I say aim straight. Don't fucking be distracted. And if you find any fucking infiltrators that are going against the the real uh, uh, direction that this movement should be going in, because I pretty much know it, you know it. But, but we hope that they will be able to spot these fuckers that are trying to steer it and get them, fucking hang them. But this is what happens to you fuckers that want to go in and fuck up this movement and put them on a goddamn lamppost. And I'd start doing that with the fucking bankers, all of them, and, and politicians. Put them on a lamppost. Yes. I'm not kidding. Yeah. No, I agree. But uh, yes. that, that will, I don't think that will happen because... Uh, if you see in Holland, most people are embracing the royal family, yeah. which is, which is, which is uh, one of the causal factors of the problem we see also in history, is people accepting a nobility and accepting royalty, accepting Talmudism, in fact, because these people, these royalty, this fake royalty who aligned themselves with these court Jews who printed the money in history, that they could use them for for the tax collection and another but thing and another thing bro is this fake fucking socialism because socialism in a pure form would actually uh, it, i like uh using muammar gaddafi as now that to me was pure socialism true socialism where the 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 the, the good yeah. uh, the goods from the ground went to the people Many people don't understand. They, you say socialism, all of a sudden they want to go fucking communism. Communism? No, well that is, but it's fake yeah. socialism. So you, yes, I, and I'm I'm saying this because of what you said. And people people uh, want to be taken care of, but the the way that they should be taken care of is not by these assholes that are actually enslaving you. <laughs> exactly. You no, know, this is also. An indication of the of the deplorable mind state of mindset of of the majority of the people. They are victims. They need a, a leader. They need somebody uh, who, who uh, you know as a boss because they cannot take care of themselves in a certain way. But they accept this idea that there are people who have a superior gene, and because of that, the superior gene, they are above. The, this, this, the, the, the normal human beings, the goyim, and they uh, are above the laws they make uh, for, for them, for, for the goyim, literally. So we are embracing this whole concept of the, this Talmudic concept that there are people who are above the law, above God, uh, who are God and have, uh, are superior to others and have the right to, uh, to do the things they do. And they are criminals. They, they, the best friends dear friends of the Dutch royal family is the uh, Saudi, uh, Saudi royals or the Sultan of Brunei who is a complete war criminal psychopath or Netanyahu who gets a red uh, carpet treatment. So if we are still operating from this mindset and the far majority does that, we are heading for, uh, for more tyranny, more slavery and, uh, and very difficult conditions, which is exactly the same, the, the solution, I think. We need more interference and that's not a nice thing it's not a pleasant thing and it comes not at the right time never <laughs> that's also a thing well yeah and i'll tell you well uh, i'm really just i'm i'm excited in a way to be honest with you about this thing and i hope it does go into a global uh situation where people are rising up whether it gets violent or not whatever it takes people need to understand that it, it, it most likely will take uh, extreme violence on the, uh, on, on the hands of the people uh, and many will die. And I don't like the idea of that, but to be realistic about it, <coughs> excuse me, to be realistic about it, these guys that have this power are not going to relinquish it easily at all. We know yeah. that. And so whatever it takes that I, I, I continue to say this, that I hope, I hope that the military uh, joins in with them. 
And uh, I hope that the people can stay united for the purpose of this getting rid of the actual cause, uh, not, not, not so much co concentrating on what has happened and the effect, because this has been something that's been going on for humanity, not just in Europe, but humanity for way too fucking long. And um, I, I, I like the idea of the people behind this being extinguished 100%. Yes. Well, they are destroying themselves in a way because it's a complete self-destructive, insane, pathetic plan they have of more control, total control. Uh, uh, it's it's self-destructive. So in a sense that they, they are doing exactly that which needs to happen, which is destroying themselves. In, in, but uh, yeah, I, I, but because you know, most people, the, the root cause is this usury banking system, for, for instance. That's, that's one of the main, major problems, but most people don't see that as, as a problem. Yeah, that's my number one thing on my list of do's, to, uh, uh, the list of to-do's for this uh, Yellow Vest uh, movement is to deal with these guys, and those are the first fuckers that need to be hung. I'm not kidding you a bit. They need to be made an example of and hung on a fucking lamppost and work your way down from there. Take away their, yeah. do like the Templars did back in France. What was that in the uh, 12, 1300? What was that uh, King uh, Philippe? Was it Philippe? Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know rounded exactly. up the ninth, that, that He rounded up the Knights Templar. I think it was Philippe, Philippe, whatever. I believe that's right. He rounded up Knights Templar, stripped them of their well, their assets, and hung them. Yeah. I mean, this needs yeah. to be a, 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 an example set. Because look at these guys are not going to be nice to you. You fucking think they're going to hand over shit? Fuck no, they're not. Yeah. So while we got some motion and movement and energy going into this thing, I hope it stays focused on this. I'm going to keep repeating that, bro. You know. No, I, me too. I, I'm going to keep. But then at the same time, we have this problem also here now with this immigration which which is already way over the top yeah. so uh if you take that take out the uh, the, the people in, uh, in the, at the top if, if that's possible of course but then you have the problem on the streets because there's also a, a big problem so how you deal with that that's another that's, thing that's the number two on my list of to do's for yeah so for the people of Europe, you go after the money, the, all of them, and that includes the politicians and everybody that fucking partakes in these goddamn open borders things. It's, it's really fucked you guys in the ass real hard on this whole, I mean, that's bad. That is such bad uh, to be the uh, partaker in the genocide of your own fucking people. Uh, and that's what this border invasion is. It's to turn you into China. It's to turn you yeah. into a fucked up people that uh, commit suicide daily because they can't stand the li living and working conditions and they're slaves. Don't be a fucking slave. Don't, ha don't accept any asshole to be your master. I'm telling that to everybody. I'm, I'm Look, at, I've been barking this shit here recently, especially. Well, I'm not your slave. I refuse to be your slave. I'm the one that goes down and gets in the faces of my local government and tells them, fuck you, you need to hang on a lamppost. I'm not kidding you. I, I went down, I've gone down and told them that and told them why, you know, because <laughs> they're yeah. liars, cheats, and thieves. And that goes everywhere. I mean, in your country, yeah. uh, all of them, those guys need to go. They need to go on a lamppost. This is the example that gets set. If you do not fucking uh, listen to the people and work for the benefit of humanity, the people, the people, it's the people's planet, not fucking Rothschild's empire. <laughs> true but most people think they are free well those are the ones that are is most enslaved yeah they are that's a brave new world the, the, those uh, who think they are free are most most enslaved yeah in holland they think that we are still living in a very free country oh yeah that's so, same, same here bro yeah and same there so people are not aware of their own slave enslavement yeah and actually, you know what? They so, clamor for it. They clamor for more of it. Yeah, they will come more. And it's going to be, uh, it's grim. I mean, it's very sad. Suicide is number one cause of death on the children in Europe, in Holland. Ouch. So, 
and probably, I mean, we're killing our own children with the vaccinations, with this transgender insanity of mutilizing children. And uh, then, from how young about that, hey, how about how about this one, bro? Uh, what? Tell me, tell me this because you could probably shed more light on it than I could ever think of. But tell me, how is the policies for uh, 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 children or having children? How are they set in uh, throughout Europe at this time? Are they promoting children or are they still kind of trying to talk you out of having children? Yeah, I, that's still, well, in the media, of course, you have this ridiculous push for multicultural, uh, multicultural push in the mainstream media, but uh, a lot of people don't want children and they, a lot of people think it's good. I mean, the push for the gay agenda, the gay agenda to, uh, it's, it's, sure. it's insane, literally. It's completely yeah. ridiculous. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, white people in Europe, they get on average, I think, one, on the whole, in the whole of Europe, 1.8 uh, children per, that, per couple. That means that you so, are in decline. And oh, yeah. at, at a certain point, they, that means extinction. Listen to this real quick. I did a workup on this share just not uh, too long ago that um, actually they, the, the, the African people, the uh, all over Africa was actually should have been extinct by now, but they pushed the they they pushed uh, them to have they're they're up at three point uh, three uh, children per uh, family, while while uh, European man is down like you said one point eight, and I think if it gets down to one point three on your on any 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 uh, society. That's almost, uh, there's almost a no re uh, return or recovery unless something no. intervenes like it happened in Africa. According to my research, these guys should be extinct. The people of Africa, that's where they were heading. So, so what happened then? They, 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 they pushed the, uh, they turned that around. Like I said, they, they are now producing 3.3 .3 children per, yeah. Yeah. per couple. So uh, actually, and and uh, I think it's by 2050, there should be. They're, they're estimating that there will be almost five billion Africans on the continent of Africa at the birth rates right now. They changed that. They, they pushed it. Now, what, meanwhile, they they've been pushing the decline of European man. Yeah, true. That's been and also with the wars, huh? Also with the wars, I mean yeah, the first world yeah. war who, generation. Who fucking and then, does, who does all the fighting? Yeah, yeah. I mean they they financed uh, Rothschild financed uh, England, France, and Germany in the first world war. They were walking with the millions in each other's uh, certain death machine gun fire for nothing. Talk about mind control. And then in the second world war, they, they were killing uh, each other. Their ethnic brothers fire bombing Germany. So they, their whole generations were killed. And now you have this feminized new generation, completely feminized, autistic, uh, city. no rebels, no rebel. Re the rebel is bred out of existence, a real yeah, rebellion. That, 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 or that's called soy speed. boy. You know what a soy boy is? The soy boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, it's, no, it's uh, yeah. So, uh, and if you see what they're bringing in uh, in, in Europe, I don't know where it goes, but uh, it's it's not. Uh, I know where it goes. You know where it goes. Yeah. That, that it's yeah. not good. We know it's where it good. goes, bro. This this is. But the interesting thing is that this feminization is also happening uh, on the Muslims, or also on the, you see these feminized Muslims, liberal kind of Muslims. They don't want to fight. They don't want to die. They, they, they. I mean, they, well, they will be. People, people in general don't want to fight. They don't want. Uh, no. Not the people. It's always the, the ones that have the agenda that are pushing the yeah. lies. And it but you have these jihadis. You have these jihadis uh, in uh, in Europe spread through Europe. Same same what happened in Yugoslavia, which is a very good marker for what's going to happen. Yugosla the war in Yugoslavia. Exactly the same dynamics, exactly the same people, actually, because it was completely Jewish run. The Carter, the, the Clinton administration was, there were more Jews in the, in the Clinton cabinet than ever before. The whole Security Council was Jewish. 
You had Jiska Fischer in Germany. It was a whole Jewish operation, this uh, war in Yugoslavia, where 26 different multi-ethnic groups were living together in a sort of harmony. Then they started with, uh, with uh, economic warfare, bringing the IMF in, and at the same time bringing in these Islamic uh, extremist factions, these Mujahideen fighters, what they're doing in whole of Europe now. So as long as people can go to the bank and get their uh, phone, the smartphone, but as soon as that will stop, or that will become uh, more diff difficult, then uh, look at Yugoslavia, what happened there. That's going to that's gonna be the same. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you, brother. And uh, I'll tell you, it's, uh, well, it, 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 that same uh, uh, story can be mirrored onto so many, because they use the same bullshit on all of us. And, and it doesn't really matter yeah. where you are. Uh, and, and, well, look, at we're all slated to become broken, understand that, broken third world countries. Yugoslavia yes. is a good example. We can look at areas in South America. We can look at the full Middle East. Meanwhile, what's happening, and we're fighting, we're fighting for, and this is a new term I kind of coined, instead of the Greater Israel Project, it's actually really the Greater Rothschild Empire because what we're doing there, including the French people that are over there fighting, you're fighting for Rothschild Empire, and I back that up by looking at what's going on in northern Iraq and Syria. Uh, we have permanent uh, U.S. bases in both countries, and uh, Genie Energy, which is down in the Golan Heights, is they're they're stealing Syrians' oil there. Which Russia is not going to do a fucking thing to help to get that back. And another thing. Russia's not going to do is they're not going to do anything about all the land. It's a lot of land, brother, uh, up in the northern Iraq and Syria areas. Russia's not going to do anything to help get that back because why? They're part of fucking charade. Yeah. Well, this Silk Route, uh, this Israeli, uh, Russia, China, this Silk, new Silk Route, while at the same time destroying this uh, Western Europe and, and the United States economy. Uh, turning them into third world countries and then building this this Chinese I mean China is really the whole it's a great experiment eh? like Ro Rockefeller said it's very well successful. Okay, don't forget don't forget Rothschilds uh, ha had control over China since the 1700s bro yeah, yeah. yeah. they still got control uh, uh, you could just look at the money angles and you'll see where yeah. Rothschilds calling the shot in China that yeah. don't forget that communist China, China uh, communism is Judaism, just like Bolshevism. It is true. Yeah, and, I agree. And so, and and to think that uh, Russia is not communist still is really naive because it's just been rebranded as Putin's Russia, the new white hope, you know, white savior, which oh. is a Jew. And the same thing applies to the Trump administration as well. It's like, yeah. Sure uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, we could go yeah. on for hours doing this shit, bro. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. My, my big thing is that look at. I hope to see. I, I promise you, this is my my deepest heart hope is to see this fucking thing explode into a uprising of humanity and understanding that they're in the fight for their lives, their livelihood, their their continued. Uh, 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 ability to be a uh, people at all, at all. And uh, I, like you, you, you do this, you have your reasons for doing your work. Like me, I do it because I made a commitment and I got grandchildren and shit. And so what do they get to fucking inherit out of all this? Crap? Right, exactly, exactly. No, it's the children, it's, it's very sad. It's very difficult. So uh, it's a moral obligation too. Yeah. I made a mess of it. Well, let's uh, let's uh, talk again uh, in uh, in time. Let's see where it goes in France, and then uh, talk again. Yeah, well, keep your eye on uh, uh, keep your eye open on what's going on there. If you got any uh, thing to share, uh, send it to me through. I don't know. Fuck you. Know, you know how to get a hold of me. Uh, yeah. Anywhere, and then don't forget to check out this new uh, video format, which I'm telling you, I like it quite a bit. It seems to have a, look cute. Yeah, yeah, I'm on there, Wardle Rants, bit.tube. 
it's new to me and but the one one click of the button literally you can migrate all your YouTube uh, uh, videos over there and so even if they shut your YouTube down it's protected <laughs> it's also peer-to-peer -peer, like bit shoot and um, I uh, hope that you'll uh, post this I'll, I'll get everything edited out and I'll send you a link uh, to it okay I I'll uh, check it yeah. <clears throat> because I, I'm not so much on the internet. Uh, I, internet is worthless here, and I have a lot of other things to do. But I'm, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. Well, well, the, check the it. Important thing, brother, to uh, let everybody know that I'm still. I got my fourth channel taken down here uh, a minute ago, about a week or so ago, and uh, I mean they did. I, look, I, I I it was four months old. And the minute that I started posting, they were restricting videos. And that's part of this thing that we were talking about earlier before we went uh, on record yeah. mode uh, about being uh, the guys that are really doing the work, the real work, are getting fucking censored and shut up. And there's still guys yeah, out but there. Some, some are not. It's so weird. Some, some are, but some are not. Uh, some people are completely. We, 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 we uh, look at, uh, we talked about it. I'm not going to get into that discussion here. We'll talk about it on some chats or whatever, but uh, that I'm still uh, uh, developing uh, uh, content. I'm going uh, full time. I'm putting in 16, 18 hours a day after that get, we get done with this. I'm going to send you the link to it, and I hope that you'll uh, put it up on your YouTube channel and tell everybody, yeah, Wardo's over here still. And because uh, uh, I know people are still looking. Now, that's the only reason why I came over was to send them to the uh, alternatives and people need to get used to that idea is to decentralize get away from these formats that are censoring and controlling the uh, the, the message and truth and um so uh for for uh, my audiences tell everybody exactly how to get a hold of you and um i hope to see this up on your excuse me uh, up on your channel after i'll send you a link I cannot, I can uh, upload, but I cannot upload from here because it's too slow the internet, but I will do that. Could you sure. download? No, I cannot download here. Okay. Okay. But well, I'm gonna, I have to go, I have to go to somewhere to a restaurant or something where I can do that. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll provide the links for you and everything. And, um, uh, well, I think this is podcast number five for you and I, so there's okay. four other ones and you could throw those on your channels. Uh, uh, I know that uh, some of your guys that uh, follow you uh, 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 like the message that I, I, I put out. And same uh, for uh, the uh, message that you put out in your, your blogs and stuff. Uh, and I, I, anyway, so everybody check out Dutch Anarchy dark, Dutch Anarchy com. correct? Yes. That's and correct. Your, and uh, the other one is, uh, but that's my other site for healing work. That's bodyoneness.nl. Okay. But uh, Dutch Anarchy, you can do that on uh, YouTube and the website, dutchanarchy.com. Okay, everybody. And this is my buddy, uh, Willem Felderhoff. And, Good uh, to see you again. Yes, it is. And uh, let's try to do this in a week. You want to shoot for that? Yeah, let's try that. Uh, let's try. Let's see if, where I am. I hope to, uh, to be able to do that. Okay, stay in touch, my friend. Okay, you take care, eh? Okay, everybody, we're signing off. Good talking with you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.